Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Ivan and I'm a commercial still life photographer. This video is a part of my online jewelry photography course in which I teach professional jewelry photography. So if you are into jewelry photography or commercial photography, please consider subscribing to the channel as I have many new videos coming soon. If you like this video, I will appreciate you hitting that like button and you have the link to my online jewelry photography course in the description below. Enjoy the video and please let me know in the comments if there is anything that you would like to know regarding jewelry photography and I will do my best to make some videos on the subject. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. In the previous video I have showed you how to set up a comfortable and versatile setup for lighting jewelry items. Lighting jewelry correctly is a very important part of the process of photographing jewelry items. But it doesn't end there, we also need to perfectly capture the jewelry using our camera. We know by now that we are unable to capture the whole item fully focused with a single exposure due to the shallow depth of field, and we understand that our lens is limited by diffraction and stopping the lens down will only produce images that are not optimally sharp. For this problem we have the solution of focus stacking. Focus stacking is a simple process of bracketing images with different focus positions and stacking these images in dedicated software like Helicon Focus. Stacking the images using software is the easy part of the process. Bracketing the focus variations is a bit more complicated. Let's explore some of the methods. The first will be executing the bracketing sequence manually. I have a ring set up and lit using the method that we have seen in the previous video. Let's make sure that our lighting is optimized for this ring. I think it looks good. So, by using the lens in manual focus mode, you can rotate the focusing ring of the lens very slightly before taking each exposure. Starting from the closest part of your object and continuing to do so until you reach the back of your object. Manual focus bracketing is possible, but as you can imagine, it will be more time consuming and probably less accurate than an automatic process. But still, it's possible. The next method will be a semi-manual process by using a camera control software such as the Canon EOS utility software. This software offers full control of the camera while using the remote shooting process. In the camera control window, we have the lens focusing section. In this section, we can focus the lens right from the computer. It offers three step sizes for moving the focus point of the lens. We can use this feature to move the focus point of our lens in accurate steps. I will start by focusing the lens on the closest part of the ring and I will take the first shot. Then I will click on the left arrow, moving the focus point further. I will repeat this process until I reach the end of the ring. It can take some time. Both the manual and semi-manual methods, although get the job done, they take far too long to execute. Some camera companies such as Nikon and Fujifilm have started offering focus bracketing in camera. This means that the process is fully automated. It does not stack the images in camera, it is only executing the focus bracketing sequence. If you have a camera that supports automatic focus bracketing, it will be easier for you to achieve a perfect stack. Unfortunately, Canon does not offer automatic focus bracketing in camera on the 5D model. But there is a way to achieve an automatic focus bracketing with the 5D. The solution to this problem is Magic Lantern. Magic Lantern is a free software enhancement that offers increased functionality to Canon DSLR cameras. It adds a host of new features to the camera that weren't included from the factory by Canon. This independent program runs alongside Canon's own software and it runs for the memory card of the camera. Magic Lantern managed to turn consumer digital cameras into capable tools suitable for high quality digital photography, adding functionality such as professional video features, time lapse, motion detection, focus assist tools, manual audio control, and most importantly for us, automated focus bracketing. To access the Magic Lantern menu, I will press the trash button while the camera's live view is on. This will bring the different parameters that we can control. I will scroll to the focus menu. This is the section that enables the focus bracketing. I will go into the focus setting menu. Here, we can choose the general step size. It offers three different sizes that correlates to the steps that we have seen in the Canon Utility software. I usually use step size number two, but when I need finer steps, I will choose step size number one. Next, I will go back to the main menu and select the focus stacking menu. This is the section that controls the actual bracketing. It offers the ability to select the number of shots in the sequence, 
and define focus steps for each picture. Each of the general step sizes is divided into 10 segments, allowing you to program the exact step size that is needed for the sequence. I usually use focus steps 8 to 1, depending on my aperture and focusing distance. The closer I am to the object that I'm photographing, the smaller the step should be in order to have full focus coverage on the object. Of course, if you use a wider aperture, you will need to use a smaller step size as the depth of field is shallower. In case you are working with a flash unit, it offers the ability to delay each step to allow the flash to recycle in time for the next step. I am using constant lights, so I don't have to worry about that. So after setting up all the parameters, I am ready to execute the bracketing sequence. I will use the live view to zoom in on the ring. I need to focus on the closest area of the ring. This is important as you don't want to miss the focus on the front area of the ring. If you are not sure where the closest area of your object is, it is better to focus even closer and get a few more shots, just to be safe that you will not miss the front of the object. After I have focused the lens, I will set the zoom box of the live view to the farthest area of the object, so I could follow the progress of the sequence. That's it, we are ready to start the focus bracketing sequence. I will select the Run Focus Stack row and press the Set button on the camera. This will initiate the bracketing sequence. I will keep an eye on the progress and when I see that the focusing has arrived to the farthest area of the ring, I can press the menu button to abort the sequence. On my computer, I will select all of the images of the sequence and group them together. I will open all the images in Camera Raw, select them all and crop the image as I don't need the empty areas of the frame. I will keep the reflection though as I will want to use it later on. Next, I will make a curves adjustment to make sure that the file's exposure is optimized. Then I will add a gentle contrast, a tiny boost of clarity, details and vibrance. After making the adjustments, I will save the images in TIFF format. Once the TIFF files have showed up, I will select them all and drag them on the Helicon Focus shortcut on my desktop. This will import the TIFF images into Helicon Focus. All I need to do after the images have been imported is to click on the Render button. Helicon Focus will start the stacking process, and after a few seconds, the stacked image is displayed. I will click on the Saving tab, and then I will click on the Save button on the right. In case you have a serial number for the item, this will be a good time to name the file. Once the file is saved, I will go back to Bridge and delete all of the TIFF files, as I don't need them anymore. That's it, our file is ready. Let's examine the details. We can see that Helicon Focus did a great job stacking the image. We have excellent sharpness with hardly any artifacts of the stacking process. Everything looks good and detailed, exactly how we want it. Helicon Focus is a great software for stacking images. Of course, you could stack the sequence using Photoshop as well, but I don't recommend it. Let's try to do the same process with Photoshop and compare the results. I will select all the TIFF files, then I will click on the Tools tab, then Photoshop, and lastly, load files into Photoshop layers. Even that is more than I would like to do for making a stack, but it doesn't end here. Let's continue. After the files have been imported into Photoshop, which takes a while, then we need to select all of the imported layers and select Auto Blend Layers, and then Stack Images. Now we have to wait, and wait, and wait. I'm sure you are starting to understand what I'm trying to show you. OK, the stack is finally done. Let's examine the result. I guess you can notice some artifacts all over the image. I don't know what this dark area in the center of the ring is, but in general I can spot many imperfections in the image. The edges don't look so great, and we can see some problems with the alignment of the images. So, although Photoshop is great for many applications, unfortunately, focus stacking is not one of them, and this is why I would recommend getting Helicon Focus for the process of stacking your images. Let's close this window and take a look at the stack that we have made with Helicon Focus once more. I think that you will agree with me that the results are much better than Photoshop, and in addition, it took only a few seconds for Helicon Focus to create the stack. Looks great. OK, so after covering the important subject of focus stacking, we are ready to finally start photographing some real jewelry items. In the next video, we are going to photograph the most common item in jewelry, the ring. I will see you in the next video.